This innocent man was sentenced to life in prison and spent 23 years behind bars before attorneys and activists could get him exonerated. I am one of thousands of individuals who have been exonerated in the United States over the last few decades. The story needs to continue to be told so that we can shine light on our broken justice system. My name is Ricky Key, and this is my high hope. Ask me anything. Thank you so much, Ricky, for telling your story, incarcerated for so long, knowing you're innocent. Did you have any things that you would tell yourself internally to like keep you going every day? Hey, Crystal. When I was really down, I used to tell myself that it's not where you are, Ricky, it's where you're going. And I just will repeat that to myself. I watched many people in prison and since I've been home not be able to tap into their resilience because they just get sunken into their current state. And so I would tell anybody who's listening, it's not where you are, it's where you're going. Hi, what were you looking forward to the most when you finally were told that you were being released? And what have you done since been out that has made you feel the best? Things that I look forward to, uh, a good steak dinner, a, a bath, they don't let you take baths, soaking my feet in carpet, just cold concrete in prison. The thing that makes me feel most good or accomplished since I've been home is actually, where you at? Is daddy's little girl. This is my seven month harmony justice. Harmony and making an impact with the world has made me feel the most uh, beautiful feelings that I've ever felt. Now Ricky works as a criminal justice reform advocate with the Midwest Innocence Project, while also heading up his latest initiative, The Upside of Life. Hey Ricky, what are some of the ways the criminal justice system can prevent false incarcerations from taking place? On the front end, we need to be looking at policies, procedures, and laws that can be changed. Dr. Samuel Gross, the National Registry for Exoneration, Mark Gotze, Barry Sheck, Peter Nofield, many individuals in this field has been looking at these issues for decades now. We need our elected officials, we need our legislators to have the gall to be able to act on these reports that show what needs to be done from a, a bill or a legislative perspective. On the back end, we need to continue to support innocent projects uh, who continue to need donations and volunteers. And then we need training. I'm doing a training now with the district attorney's office that was responsible for convicting me. It's called the cost of a prosecutor's decision where I'm going back in and I'm training them about the mistakes that can be made so that they can try not to make them in the future. Those are a few things, just a few of the things that we can do when we're talking about correcting wrongful convictions 